So reverb is one of those things. In electronic music, it is so important to give our tracks a sense of life, a sense of depth and space, but it's also really easy to mess up. The reality is you're probably using some instance of reverb every single song that you make, so why not understand how to use it properly? Once you have a proper understanding of reverb, it honestly makes your life as a music producer so, so much easier, so stay tuned. As well, if you're looking for any free music production resources, go check out that free downloads link in the description. The real outcome of this video is I want you to be able to know all the functions so you can quickly tweak any reverb to specify with your track. So of course I don't expect anyone to go and design a reverb particularly for each track that you make, but instead I want you to use the knowledge in this video to, to be able to go, hey, uh, okay, I want my reverb to sound a little bit more metallic, so now I know how to do that, or maybe I want my reverb to sound a little bit more shimmery and ambient, I know which knobs I have to tweak to create that effect too. So understanding how to use reverb is really just a workflow thing, it's just gonna speed up how you use reverb in your songs. All right, so let's dive into it, and the first thing I wanna explain is about how algorithmic reverbs actually work. So algorithmic reverbs are trying to replicate real world reverberations with a series of delays or echoes. So this reverb here is really just delaying the input signal a whole bunch of times to create this reverb sound that we know. And every digital algorithmic reverb is created from two separate parts. It's the reflections and the diffusions. So if we're thinking back to our real world space, uh, let's say there's a guitar amp in the middle of the room. The closer you are to that guitar amp, the more of that input signal that you can hear. It's coming directly from the guitar amp straight into your ears. But the further away you are from it, the more sound that you can hear from the room. And that is the early reflections. These are the reflections that are bouncing off the walls directly around you and then going into your ear. And this is giving us a sense of the room that we're in. So the early reflections are what creates the illusion of the room that we're in. That's the important point here. The diffusions, they are the tail of the reverb. That's the sound that we associate reverb with usually. So just to recap, every digital reverb is made of two components. It's reflections which is the immediate early sound of the reverb and the diffusions which is that long reverb tail that we know and love. So now moving on to Ableton's reverb here. It's actually a very interesting reverb because there's so much flexibility in how you can design your reverb. Ableton's reverb is laid out in terms of signal flow. Uh, it's over on the left we have this box here which is the input processing. This allows us to tweak the input as it's coming into the reverb and then we have the early reflection. So this is the beginning of the reverb and we can modulate and tweak how the uh, reflections of the reverb sound. We have the global which relates to both the early reflections and the diffusions. We have the diffusion network over here, which is just the tail of the reverb. I think the diffusion network, the name up here is uh, quite misleading. I think it should have just been maybe diffusions or diffusion tail. The word network I think is a little bit scary at times. And then over on the right side here we have the mixer. So this is the amount of mix dry wet of the actual reverb that we that we want. We can mix in how much diffusions that we want and we can mix in how much reflections that we want as well. So I'm going to start off with uh, the basic reverb preset again. So I've just uh, reset the preset. And I've got a few sounds here. What this, this first one is like a metallic perk, like this. And this second one here is like a chord stab. So let's talk through this reverb device from left to right and go through each function of it. So first of all, we've got this input processing section over here. So this is an EQ that we can apply to the input sound that is coming into the reverb. It's not EQing the actual source sound itself. Uh, and it's not EQing the output of the signal, but it's actually e EQing the input that is coming into the reverb. So if I was to cut it like this, that would be like the same as sending a, uh, a sound that has no low end into this signal. So this way we're cutting the low end out before it even goes into the reverb, which is a really good way of doing it. So I'm gonna move over to this stab here and we can use this input processing to get a little bit less low end in our sound. 
So you can hear the difference between when I bring the EQ down over to the high end frequencies and when I move it over to the low end frequencies. You can hear how it's really shaping the, the reverb sound. Also in the input processing section, we have the pre-delay. Uh, and the pre-delay just delays the onset of the whole reverb and allows us to separate the transient from the actual reverb sound. So if you think about it, when you put reverb on a sound, you're, you're technically pushing it back in the mix. But if you want to maintain that integrity of the sound, uh, then using pre-delay is a really good way of doing that. So we're, we're delaying the actual reverb sound itself. So you'll have a really clear example of that if I go over this uh, metallic perk sound and put a whole bunch of pre-delay on it. You can see how delayed that is. I'm just gonna dial that back to uh, a, a good amount of pre-delay here. And you can see that when I use the pre-delay like this, it kind of sounds like it's echoing a little bit. That maintains the actual transient, so we're not muddying up the transient and we're giving ourselves uh, an illusion of depth as well as opposed to if I put the pre-delay all, all the way to the left. It makes it feel more like an echo and gives it a larger sense of depth as well. So now moving on to the early reflections. We have this spin button that, which allows us to modulate the early reflections. We'll talk about more about that in a moment, but I'm gonna turn down all the diffusions in this case and turn up the reflections so you can hear just the reflections of this reverb. That's what they sound like, just the start of the reverb. I'm gonna turn it up to 100% dry wet as well. So this is just that, again, that initial uh, illusion of what the room sounds like. And we also have a few different uh, knobs that we can use to change how those reflections feel. The most important one for the early reflections is probably the size knob here. And that's actually under the global because this affects both the early reflections and the late diffusions as well. So we can change the size of the room and that's gonna change how the early reflections sort of feel. And then we also have this shape knob here and the shape knob does a lot to blend the early reflections with those uh, diffusion tail as well. So let's turn up the diffusions here as well and have a listen to how the shape knob sort of affects things. I'm gonna turn the size back down as well. So if we're listening to the early reflections, you can hear how uh, when I turn the shape all the way up, it, it feels more like a little bit of an echo. You can hear that's a bit more jittery and that's a little bit more immediate. So this is more or less like an experimental knob in Ableton's reverb. It's, it doesn't have a clear definition of what it's actually doing, but you can definitely see that it is changing the early reflections. So you can experiment around with it and see what you like. I'm gonna move over to this stab here and have a listen here. So I've turned down the diffusions all the way here and turned the reflections all the way up and it doesn't sound like there's really any reverb applied. It sounds a, it sounds a little bit different but it doesn't sound too reverby and that's because we're just listening to early reflections and as long as the input sounds, so this stab, as long as this stab is uh, getting sent to the reverb, we're going to be hearing early reflections, right? It's because the early reflections are like those first immediate delay sounds so and the spin is just going to be modulating those early reflections to give it a little bit more randomness so have a listen to how this is sort of changing the feel of this Moving over to the global section, I know we've already talked a little bit about this. Uh, the quality over here, we have uh, economical, mid and high quality. So I mostly just use economical and high. Eco is just gonna save a little bit of CPU. So if you want some reverb on something really quickly, but if you're designing the reverb and you wanna be specific with how the reverb is sounding and have a nice smooth sound to your reverb, then uh, high quality is good as well. But it's, it's also also nice to experiment with these because they all offer a slightly different tone and texture. So you can hear the difference between economical and high quality here.
the high quality one is a little bit smoother and the economical one is a little bit uh, harsher and grittier. The stereo knob is just like our width knob, uh, so all the way to the left is mono and all the way to the right is completely separate left and right channels. So moving over to the diffusion network now, this is kind of misleading because the diffusion network is this whole box here. So uh, the first thing that we notice here is we have this uh, high and low shelving filters. This is a, uh, a, a filter that affects the decay of the reverb, the actual diffusion. So remember the diffusion is just the tail of the reverb. So if I turn off the reflections and turn the diffusions all the way up, maybe I turn the size up a little bit as well. It's just the tail of the reverb. We're not talking about the reflections, which is the start of it. We're talking about just the tail. So this EQ here is just shaping how the tail is going to decay. So if I've got a whole bunch of low end in my tail, if I pull down this uh, left band here, there's still low end in the reverb, but the low end decays really quickly. I'm going to pull the decay time up a lot so it's a bit easier to understand. The same with the high frequencies here. If I pull this down, at the start there's some high frequencies there, but then they decay really quickly. So if I was to do something like this, the mid frequencies here are really the only ones that are going to be reverbed. So this EQ here is really uh, important in shaping the tail of the reverb and how that sounds. The decay time is just the length of the diffusion tail. And fun fact, this is actually uh, just the feedback amount of the early reflections. So to create the diffusions, what is happening is the early reflections are just being feedbacked into the input. And then uh, and the decay time is just the amount of feedback here. So the more feedback we have, the, uh, the, the longer the decay time. So we have this freeze button next to the decay time and that just freezes the reverb to endlessly repeat. And that will just keep repeating for as long as we keep that freeze button on. We also have this flat and cut buttons. Uh, the flat, when I click this flat button, that will bypass this EQ here. So that'll make this EQ line flat. That's what it means. So when I unclick this and freeze this reverb, what's gonna happen is it's going to start to dissipate because this decay time EQ is going to take effect. So flat will just bypass this. Cut will just make it so that any input is cut out of the freeze section. So if this freeze is engaged and I click space here, it's not feeding any of this input into the reverb. And if I unengage this cut button, it will feed that input into the reverb. So I can keep clicking this. And that will continue to uh, add more and more uh, input signal into this reverb. So we have this chorus over here, which is gonna modulate just the diffusion tail of this reverb. It's not gonna modulate the uh, reflections, it's just gonna modulate the diffusions over here. And then we have the two, these two knobs, density and scale, and these another two experimental knobs in this reverb. They're, they're not really well defined in what they actually do. They just change how the diffusion tail sounds. So this says that it, change, it changes the density of the echoes in the diffusion tail. So uh, supposedly to the left, it's supposed to sound thinner and to the right, it's supposed to have more of those echoes so let's have a little listen to that. It's kind of hard to hear. So to the left, you can hear the echoes a little bit more easy because there's less of them. And to the right, it echoes it more, so it sounds a little bit more thicker. It's also interesting to play with the density and scale knobs when the size is at zero.
there isn't much online that really says what this scale button does. Uh, in the Ableton manual, it just says it it controls the coarseness of the diffusion. So uh, it's it's really quite ambivalent as to what this actually does to the algorithm, especially when the size is down. You can hear that the scale knob really just changes a lot of the resonances in the reverbs, and it just changes how it sounds as well. So I've also got this uh, Fab Filter EQ here just to show you uh, how the resonances are going to change when I move this scale knob around. <laughs> So you can hear there's this uh, this EQ, there's this bump around 328 hertz here. And when I change the scale knob, have a look at how the resonance is moving well. So now we have the prominent EQ bump, which is around 400 hertz, which is uh, a lot different to what it was before. And when you move the scale knob around, you'll hear that just those, those resonances all just change around. So again, scale is another quite experimental knob on this reverb device. Just experiment around with density and scale when you're designing your reverb tails just to see what you like and what fits with your track. Now over on the right side, we talked about this already. This is just the mixer section of the reverb. So we have uh, access to the reflection amount and the diffusion or the tail amount and then just the dry wet amount here as well. So the great thing about Ableton Reverb is there is a whole suite of really good uh, presets here. And I just want to make an example and just look at one of the presets in particular. I'm gonna swap this one out and I wanna go grab the uh, outer space preset. I think this is a really great preset and it shows us how you can really use this reverb in different ways. So let's have a listen to this reverb with this stab that we have here. And it is a quite outer worldly sound. It, it, it's not a natural sounding reverb. And that is the point here. So how they've created this sound is there's three really important components to this reverb. The first most important component is the size knob. The size knob is all the way down. So we have a really small room and really quickly repeating reverb sound. Uh, the next most important uh, component, which is a really big sort of contrast to that small size, is a really large decay time. So we have a small size and a large decay time, which means it's going to be repeating really quickly, but decaying for a long time, which gives it this sort of weird, unnatural feel. The next most important thing is the reflections here. You can see that they've actually turned the reflections all the way off. And it's these three knobs together, the small size, the the long decay time and the the no reflections at all which makes this uh, reverb sound really unnatural but really sort of metallic and and repeating really quickly and uh, really other otherworldly so i really urge you to experiment with this reverb device and see what textures you can come up with as well now just quickly i wanted to touch on valhalla vintage verb and i wanted to sort of contrast the differences between valhalla vintage verb and between the ableton reverb and we can now use our knowledge that we've uh, got from understanding um, ableton reverb and apply it to valhalla vintage verb it's all the same functions but it's just laid out in a slightly different way so uh, valhalla Valhalla Vintage Verb makes it really easy because uh, there's a whole bunch of modes here and these modes, they change how the reverb actually sounds. So it's a bit more preset based in this way. Uh, there's a little bit less control that we have here, but it's laid out in a nice way and it doesn't make it uh, harder to achieve the sound that you want. So again, we have a mix knob and we have our pre-delay knob, which we will be familiar with. We have our decay knob, which is the decay time, which is we're also familiar with. We then have this damping section and this damping section is the same as this uh, diffusion EQ over here that we have in this Ableton reverb. So uh, the, the damping section, I, I never really understood this section when I first opened uh, Vintage Verb. It, it's a little bit harder to understand than the Ableton one because it's a little bit less visual. What, it, what is happening here is we have a high shelf, which is the same as this thing here. This is a high shelf. That's what a high shelf looks like. 
And uh, this is the amount at which it's attenuating. So like how much it's reducing the gain of the high frequencies. And this is the uh, high frequency amount. So any number beyond 5,000 Hertz, it's gonna be reducing it by 10 decibels here. And that's how this is working. And remember, this is the diffusion tail and how the diffusion tail decay time is changing and being modulated. So next we have this base multiplier thing and this thing always confused me and, and what this is doing is, uh, is it's trying to emulate sounds in the natural world again. So in real life, low frequencies travel further and for longer than high frequencies. So the base multiplier is just trying to emulate sort of natural sounds. The, the low frequency information will usually be more present than the high frequency information. But essentially it's the exact same thing that we're doing here with this low shelf here, right? So if I wanted to cut the lows, I would just take this down to below one, so 0 0.5. That's gonna cut them by half of the decay time. So if this is on two seconds and this is on 0 0.5, then the decay of the frequencies below 700 Hertz are going to be one second rather than two. And if I bring it up to two times, then it's going to be double this decay time. So at first it takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around this, but it's essentially the exact same thing as doing this. So the shape sort of, again, is in relation to those early reflections, uh, the attack of the sound and the uh, relative size of the room. Over here, we have a diffusion section and a knob for early and for late. So this is the uh, reflections or the early reflections as it's called over here. And this is the uh, late uh, diffusions or just the, the, the reverb tail over here. So we can change the density of the early and late reflections in this case. Uh, we have a modulation section over here, which is again sort of the same thing as just this chorus modulation section over here. And then we have an output EQ, which is similar to the input EQ over here. It's a, it does a similar job. So I'm going to quickly put this into practice and design a reverb for this metallic stab sound here. So there's quite a lot of modulation going on. I'm going to bring back that depth a bit. I'm going to bring out the... I think there's too much bass frequencies here as well, so I'm going to cut that a bit. You can see they're decaying a little bit quicker now. I think I'm going to take the high shelf off a little bit. Uh, maybe I'll cut it. I'll cut the EQ a little bit later, and the size. Let's play around with that a bit. And let's have a listen to what the attack does as well. So the attack really makes that reverb quite gradual. So I think I'm going to put it around about the middle. I think I want to pull up this pre-delay as well. Let's just use this EQ to cut the high frequencies and make it a little bit more natural sounding. So I think that's quite a natural sounding reverb for the stab that we have here. And it puts it into a really nice space that I like. So that's it for today. Reverb is a really important tool to have in our arsenal as a producer. It's really worth putting a little bit of time into experimenting and getting to know your reverbs. So when it does come to producing tracks in the moment, you won't get caught up in tweaking your reverb and you'll get to that end result that you're looking for much, much quicker. I hope that you've learned a few things today. If you've enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me as always, and I'll see you in the next one.